how to install Case Fans into a desktop computer. Hello everyone, Torx here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Case Fans into a desktop computer. Now the first thing to get right is to align the fans in the proper orientation, since one side of them will suck in air while the other side will blow it out. But how do we know which side of the fan will do what? The easiest way to find out is to simply locate the side of the fan where the wire is visible. See how one side is easier to stick your fingers in and spin the blades around while the other has these four little guards in the way? The side with the little guards in the wire is the side where the air will be blowing out. Imagine looking at it and air blowing into your face. Which means, obviously, the side without the wire is the sucky side. Another way you can figure this out is to carefully examine the frame of the fan. Sometimes you'll see a pair of arrows labeled on one side. One will be horizontally pointing to where the air will be blowing, and one will vertically be pointing to what direction the blades will be spinning in. Now you have a chassis and you're ready to install your fans. But which spots should have fans taking in air and which spots should have the fans exhausting it? Traditionally, the front, the front side, and the bottom of the chassis should be where your intake take fans are. Remember how to orient them. The sides with the wires should be facing toward the inside of the case because this way the fans will be sucking in air from the outside and blowing air inside. Now that you have your intake fans pushing the cool air into your system, let's set up the exhaust fans that will be pulling out the hot air. Exhaust fans should be installed on the roof, rear, and in some rare cases the rear side panel of the chassis. As you can see, my chassis doesn't have any slots for fans on the rear side panel and yours likely won't either. For these fans, the sides of them that blow the air should be facing facing the outside of the case. Usually I like to attach protective fan grills onto the exhaust fans, as the exposed fins of the sucky sides of them will make it easier for loose wires or your fingers to get caught in them. Usually this isn't really an issue for the intake fans, as their guarded sides are what will be exposed to the inside of the case, but you can still attach grills onto them if you wish. Attaching a grill to a fan is really easy. Do it preferably before you install the fan in the chassis. Align the same size grill to the fan, as in if you have a 120mm fan like I do here, get a 120mm fan grill. They only cost a couple bucks each. Screw on with the same screws you use to screw the fan into the case. And of course, make sure you're attaching the grill to the side of the fan that will be facing the inside of the case because otherwise, well, you won't be able to screw it in. Line up the fan to the cutouts in the chassis. Usually there will be four circular holes that will align perfectly with the fan's holes, but sometimes they'll have variable cutouts like my chassis here. They're longer, oval-shaped cutouts that allow you to adjust where you want to screw the fan in. But I'm just going to set this rear fan as high as I can. You can do this with the case either standing up or on its side. I'm just doing it standing up so you get a better angle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, my middle school student humor came out once again. Align the screws from the outside of the case. Hold onto the fan to prevent it from dropping and screw in the first screw most of the way. Leave it just a little loose so you can make minor adjustments to the fan as you screw in the rest. Don't worry, the fan is very light. One screw will be enough to hold it in place. Once they're all in, then you can worry about securing them. This is the same exact process you'll use when installing bottom, side, and roof fans. My chassis here does not have any spots for side or bottom fans, so I couldn't show you that, but you'll figure it out. Plus, it doesn't need them. It's got three big old 140 millimeter fans in the front. Speaking of the front, if you want to add front fans in your chassis, most of the time you'll have to yank off the front panel. Usually this is done by simply placing your fingers underneath it and pulling it off with brute force, but make sure to consult your motherboard's manual on how to do this first. You don't want to break anything. At least, most people don't want to break anything. I don't know, if you're Antarctic, you you might want to break something. I, I, I'm, just, I'm not trying to discriminate. I'm just, you know, just generalizing. Sorry. The fans usually will require special elongated screws that will go through both parallel holes in the fan and then into the case. Your chassis should supply you with these, but if you don't have them, you're free to go get them. Now that the fans are physically in place, there's only one thing left to do. Plug them in. Now typically you'll have two options. If your fan has a three pin connector like shown here, you can plug it into any three or four pin slots you have on your motherboard. The four pin slots are meant for your heat sinks fans first, but they work perfectly fine for case fans. That extra pin is sort of a smart pin that allows the heat sink fan attached to it to change its speed based on how hot the processor is running. However, case fans don't need these as they tend to run at full speed constantly. Only use four pin connectors for your three pin case fans if you have extra ones your heat sink isn't occupying. To make sure you have the connector in the correct pins, simply line the plastic end up with a notch on the slot, like this. My motherboard has four four-pin slots, no three pins. Both my heatsink fans are taking two of them while I have my rear fan plugged into one. I could plug another fan into the last vacant slot, but there really is no need. I'd rather have less cables running across my motherboard anyway. Generally speaking, you'll run out of motherboard slots for your fans pretty quickly, so the next thing to do is to plug the rest of your fans into the power supply. With three-pin connectors, you can convert them into what are known as four-pin Molex connectors. Now, don't confuse four-pin Molex with four-pin motherboard connectors. Four-pin Molex cables cables attached to the power supply's Molex cables, which look like this. Manufacturers will often incorrectly label their fans as 4-pin, but what they mean is that they have 4-pin Molex 
connectors that must be attached to the power supply and are not meant to be heat sink fans for your CPU. Plugging the fan into the motherboard instead of the power supply has one advantage, that is that you can monitor the fan speed in the BIOS or some software. However, as far as actual performance goes, it doesn't matter. Now you may have noticed these Molex cables and adapters have two plugs on them. One, the male has to be plugged into the power supply's female Molex outlets, and the female can be plugged into a male connector off of another fan. One Molex connector from the power supply can power up to about eight 120 millimeter fans from what I've researched, but I've also heard that can go higher than that. That being said, I'd still recommend you divide your fans up as much as possible, as in I wouldn't force all your fans on one single Molex connector if you can help it. Also, when using fans larger than 120 millimeter, try to prioritize dividing those up. You can attempt attaching them all together, but if some of them don't spin when you power on the computer, try splitting them up into different Molex connectors from the power supply. There's only so much power a single connector can deliver. There's a lot but it's finite. I have all of my power supplies Molex connectors wrapped behind the chassis, so they're just not in the way of the motherboard. You can loop your fan's cables behind them too. If your chassis does not have cable management, then just do this anywhere in the case, it doesn't really matter. That's it, that's basically everything you need to know about installing fans in your computer's case. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more PC how-to videos, and if you have any questions or video requests at all, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Torx out.